The midterms are just days away, and like most election cycles, Florida's results have big implications across the nation and in Washington. In our state, voters are set to decide the outcome of a slew of contentious races. One of the most watched is for governor between Tallahassee Mayor Democrat Andrew Gillum and former U.S. Congressman Republican Ron DeSantis. And our current governor, Rick Scott, is trying to unseat longtime Democratic Senator Bill Nelson for his seat in the U.S. Senate. Earlier, we spoke to PBS NewsHour correspondent Lisa Desjardins to hear more about the key races in the Sunshine State and the hot-button issues that could have big implications nationwide. No state has more close and pivotal elections on the ballot than Florida, and that's all the way from your governor and senator's races down to the House races. Florida could show the nation which way voters are leaning back and forth. The issues in Florida also speak to what's on national minds. We have a tremendous amount of environmental concerns in Florida this year. Florida's not alone, but I think that's going to be pivotal. In addition to that, there are a lot of talk about taxes, about just the future direction of this country, immigration, guns. I think every issue of national concern is an issue in Florida. All right, joining me now to help break down some of the key races and issues on the ballot is Sean Foreman, chair of the Department of History and Political Science at Barry University, Charles Zeldin, professor of history and political science at Nova Southeastern University, and Brian Crowley of CrowleyPoliticalReport.com. Brian, let's go ahead and start with you. Let's go ahead and talk about the race for governor. Of course, you have Democrat Andrew Gillum running against Republican Ron DeSantis. Gillum known to be a progressive. He's supported by Bernie Sanders. You have DeSantis is a Trump Republican. They've had two contentious debates already. So kind of walk us through this race. Well, I, you know, I covered my first governor's race in the 1980s, and I've never seen anything like this race. Uh, this is a race where normally the candidates at this point would be trying to move toward the middle, trying to attract the independent voter, trying to attract that Republican and that Democrat who's uh, not hardcore but a little uh, in the middle. Uh, not this year. This year it's a very, very hardcore race. It's uh, in some ways copying the presidential race of 2016. Uh, Ron DeSantis is very, very hardcore to the right. Uh, uh, Gillum is very, very hardcore to the left. Uh, uh, they make no bones about it. And uh, uh, the electorate is, is uh, very, very splintered in the state over these two candidates. And we've already seen a couple of polls come out uh, showing that both of these men are in a tight race. So what do you think might happen? We still have to wait for independence and I guess undecided folks to get out there and go to the polls. Early voting's over, so it really depends on what happens on Tuesday, right? Yeah, I, I try not to commit the sin of predictions. <laughs> uh, I, I really don't think we have a clue what's gonna happen in this campaign. The polls are kind of a little all over the place. There's, you can buy a poll that shows either one of them up. Uh, I think there are some interesting issues that are kind of regional. You know, you have the the uh, red tide and the algae blooms that are having big effects on voters in southwest Florida and in the Treasure Coast. You know, the hurricane is going to have an impact on some of the Republican voters in, in Mexico Beach and, and in that area, uh, which is heavily Republican. So I don't know for sure what the turnout will be in that area. So uh, Republicans may have to make up the loss in those areas by trying to build up their numbers in other parts of the state. Uh, I, you know, I think it's a very complicated election year, and of course we have the added bonus that uh, the President of the United States is coming down and, and, uh, and working hard to try to help uh, DeSantis win this race, and he's getting enormous crowds, so yeah. I, this is a very unforgettable campaign. And Barack campaign. Obama's going to come down and campaign for Gillum as well. Charles, let's move on. Speaking of the governor's race, we've got our current governor, Rick Scott, a Republican trying to unseat longtime uh, Democratic Senator incumbent Bill Nelson, who has served 18 years in the Senate. Walk us through this. You know, we know traditionally incumbents are the ones who usually win these races, but Rick Scott, very well known in our state, getting a lot of props for how he's handled hurricanes and Irma, et cetera. So walk us through this and what do you think is well, going to happen here? what you have here is, is, a, is a campaign between two incumbents. Hmm. Uh, granted, one's a governor and the other one's a senator, but you're, you're talking two of the top leaders of the state running against each other on their records. And... That's, that's to the good, because they're known, but also to the bad. For example, Rick Scott has problems with the red tide. That's, that's eating away, especially on the southwest coast of Florida, which happens to be Rick Scott territory. So uh, it's, kind of, it, it, it's kind of a toss-up. 
you, you, you've got two candidates who have good chances and good reasons to win. Uh, I suspect, actually, that the, what's going to decide who wins the Senate race is going to be who shows up for the governor's race. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, if the, you know, the governor's race, they're, 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 they're banking on bringing in voters from their side in large numbers rather than going to the middle. Well, if one of them manages to get unexpected voters in to vote their way, I doubt these voters are going to split their ticket when it comes to the Senate race. So uh, in the Senate race, it may be that Rick Scott wins or, 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 or Nelson wins, not because of the race they ran, but because of a, a race they're not even a part of, which is the governor's race. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Again, one of the big issues, though, and we don't sometimes talk about these, is the environment, the economy. So talk about how that's going to play into this. Well, the environment is, 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 is a big issue in Florida yeah. and, and will become a bigger issue between the impact of global climate change, the red tide situation, yeah. the algae blooms, what do we do about the, the, the Everglades and the fact that it's, it's potentially dying, yeah. um, all those issues play large, especially in south, the southern half of Florida, mm -hmm. uh, which means it's important not only to Democratic voters, but again, there's a large swath of Republican voters along the southwest coast for which these are important issues. Yeah. And we had a lot. And, and meanwhile, you've got yeah. people up in the panhandle who, who are also facing environmental issues in Absolutely. terms of bigger and stronger storms, right. uh, plus in their parts yeah. in, the, in that area where, again, rising tides could be a problem. All right, let's move on then, Sean. Two big congressional seats up for grabs in Miami-Dade County alone. Let's start with District 26. This is incumbent Republican Carlos Curbelo versus newcomer Democrat and FIU Dean Debbie Mercarcel Powell. Talk about the issues here. Yeah, so control of the House of Representatives is at stake. They're, if the Democrats win 23 seats or flip 23, they can get the majority. And these are two that they really have their eyes on. Uh, Curbelo won last time, even though Hillary Clinton did better than Trump in that district. And so Carbe Curbelo has really been a target of national Democrats running ads against him. They feel that's a seat they can pick up. Yeah. But Carlos Curbelo has been a moderate Republican, especially on uh, uh, climate uh, issues and sea level rise, uh, on social too, issues, yeah. and on immigration. That's right. So he's sort of moderated his views to fit the um, district a little bit better. What's working against him is his vote for the tax cut, mm. which uh, doesn't play as, as strongly in that district as it may in elsewhere. And gun is uh, gun control gun is control. a big issue there, where Debbie Mukherjee Powell, uh, whose father was uh, killed in uh, Ecuador when she was a teenager, has made that one of her big issues. That uh, the Cabello hasn't been strong enough on gun control. Okay, let's move on to District 27. Surprising a lot of folks. Of course, this was Ileana Ross Leighton's seat for years, a Republican in a district that's now blue. They voted for Hillary in the last election. It's closer than a lot of people thought, though, because, of course, we have former U.N. President, Democrat Donna Shalala running against Spanish-language journalist Republican Maria Elvira Salazar. None of these women has held elected office before. Obviously, shalala has been in Washington before. Talk about this race. Yeah, so neither one of them were really expected to be the candidates early on. They both jumped in after many other people announced that they were running and somewhat cleared the field. And Democrats uh, really thought that they were going to win this race for sure, uh, but the polling has been closer than yeah. expected. Some people think that Donna Shalala hasn't run an energetic campaign. I, I don't think that's true. She has been out there. Uh, they say she doesn't connect with voters because she doesn't speak Spanish, and 60 percent of that district is Hispanic origin. Uh, so there are some concerns that it's as close as it is and that they're spending money, Democrats, to try to get Shalala to win. Uh, Salazar, on the other hand, has been a Trump supporter and she's kind of having it both trying to have it both ways uh, be close to Trump where it helps with voters but try to set uh, including on immigration yeah. but separate with him on issues dealing dealing with women's rights and um, you know just and sort of the on civility. immigration too though because she's an you know she's a Cuban American herself grew up in South Florida Right. Well, she's had different positions, yeah. and so uh, this week she supported what the president said about ending birthright citizenship right. with the 14th Amendment. So, we'll see so that confuses that. voters where she stands. Brian, District 18 in Northern Palm Beach County, one to watch as well. Incumbent Brian Mass facing challenger Lauren Baer, a former Obama administration senior advisor to former Secretaries of State Hillary Clinton, John Kerry talk about that race. You know, that's a district for most of the last 20 years flips back and forth between Democrat and Republican. It's very much a swing district. Uh, and uh, it, this looks like it's going to be a very, very close race. And one of the things that's interesting about this race is that 
there are a couple of very, very local issues that have just carried through in this race. For example, the Treasure Coast deeply opposes the Bright Line train. Mm -hmm. They don't want the Bright, Bright Line train coming through there. They have vigorously opposed it for a long time now. And Brian Mast and Lauren Bear have taken up the mantle on that. Uh, the algae blooms and the, and the condition of Lake Okeechobee, huge issue in the Treasure Coast. So both of the cans have been forced to talk about and deal with those issues. And Brian Mast has tried to make a lot of headway by saying all the accomplishments he feels like he's made in making progress with the uh, improving Lake Okeechobee. So those are the kinds of issues that are actually are the most important in that district. Uh, the, a third one that has come up is uh, uh, pre-existing conditions has become a big issue in the last couple of weeks in that campaign. There's a lot of people talking about pre-existing conditions, a little less so than the overall health care issue, mm -hmm. but really focusing hard on pre-existing conditions.